Hello everyone, thanks for joining us. This is Alicia and Whitney on Coming Coming Up Up Higher, Higher, where we're cultivating atmospheres for God to move in everyday life. Hey everyone, welcome to Coming Up Higher. This is Alicia speaking with my lovely sister Whitney, and we're here to bring you encouragement and uh, just talk about something that I think is very, very needed right now in this hour, and it is called defiant hope. Mm, That's good. Yeah, and we got a lesson in this this week. Oh, (laughs) man. This is hot off the press, (laughs) so... It's uh, definitely new, new revelation, but just rooted in, rooted in God and His Word, and really rooted in what our faith should be. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it it started again on a Thursday night dwelling place. I feel like that that's the beginning of our stories a lot these days. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it happened in worship in the dwelling place. Imagine that, and that's our Facebook Live worship nights that we've been having on Thursday nights, and. A song of the Lord just came forth. We were singing a song called um, Glory to Glory. Mm -hmm. And from that, just this song of praise and worship came forth. It just keeps getting better. Just keeps getting better, better with you. And um, we just kept singing that over and over. And Mm -hmm. and that has been so true in my life and in Whitney's life where it was just, we knew what we were like before we allowed Christ to just totally take over and transform mm-hmm. our lives. Right. We know what he, the grief that he's brought us out of the, the hurt and the woundedness that he's yeah, brought us out of security. And, and, yeah. Just mindset shifts, pers- mm-hmm. perspective shifts that he's brought us out of. And, and it is our testimony. It just keeps getting better with him. Does that mean life circumstances are always easy? No. Does that mean we're free of trials? No. But the more we tap into his presence and the more we seek him and the more we find him and the more we love him and Mm -hmm. um, it does keep getting better in his presence and it's just going to keep getting there because guess what? We have eternity with him. (laughs) (laughs) And so you took a clip of us Mm -hmm. singing that on our Thursday night dwelling place. Yeah. Well, there's so much. So much I could pull out of a dwelling place because it's it's an hour it's usually an hour Facebook live that we do Thursday nights at seven p.m. Central for those of you listening. <laughs> you can tune in. Little plug. Yeah, but there was there's so many things I could pull out of, but I was like, you know what? This is such a good message because obviously, like we're all going through some sort of hardship, whether we're all in the same storm together with mm-hmm. this virus. So whether it's it's you don't have a job or you've gotten sick or maybe you do have a job and you've been running ragged this entire time because you're one of those businesses that helps keep it all going yeah, and together. Essential. Yeah. yeah. And, and so I was like, you know what, this is a great message. And just because of technicality stuff, I just posted like a 30, 30 or 40 second clip of it. And, um, cause that way I can schedule it out on, on Instagram. And, we I posted it to Twitter and Twitter is our like least <laughs> I don't wanna say anything bad, but it's just the one that we don't know the most about, yeah, I guess. Yeah, and we don't it's the least that we've cultivated, but we have the most followers on it. Yeah. <laughs> so God's kinda like, you need to be on here, I guess, because we man, we do not like Twitter. But it's like a foreign language to me. I don't get it. And I'm like I mean, we're young, we're in our twenties, so it's not that we grew up without computers. Like that would make sense. Like if I grew up without technology, of course it doesn't make sense. But, and I got, I got Facebook, I got Instagram. I even got Snapchat. Like I know how those work and I get it. But Twitter is just like this anomaly. I don't understand. But anyways, long story short here, I posted that clip on there and went to bed, you know, no big deal. Well, I wake up the next morning and Alicia calls sometime that day. And she's just like, Hey, um, your post on Twitter is getting a lot of, uh, attention. attention. Yeah. (laughs) I was like, Oh, thinking like, (laughs) awesome. Like people are loving the message. You know, it's what's needed to be heard. Uh, but that wasn't the case. No, the (laughs) haters came out in full force and it was just like, we had one post and, and they said, 
because the the text to the video said it just keeps getting better and better with Jesus every day. It every just day, keeps getting better, yeah. And uh, someone from someone retweeted it and said, "Well, twenty twenty debunked that, or twenty twenty says Disagree. the difference." <laughs> yeah. So there was another negative one that said, um, "I don't know, something like COVID rates are through the roof and injustices are are you know all around." But at first it was like, it was troubling me because it was just like, why, why do people, why are they against this so much? Why are they calling us these, these names or, or doing all these things and just speaking so negatively about this simple post that we put out? And um, the next morning I was in my, my Bible time and in my worship time and, and just the term defiant hope came up in my spirit. And I wrote it down and there's, there's something that's defiant when you're choosing to go against the agenda or go against the, the dialogue and, and the negativity that's going on in the atmosphere right now. There's a little bit something that says, no, I'm not going to go along and go with the flow. There's a defiance and a rebellion against the darkness to proclaim what, is, what God has said, mm -hmm. to proclaim the hope of Jesus, to keep speaking life when everybody's speaking death and mm -hmm. sickness numbers and all these things, shootings and all that. There's something to be said about having that defiant hope that goes against the grain. And I truly think that can only be found through knowing Jesus. Right. Yeah. Well, that's the thing is we don't, and I guess even thinking back to my post is that, you know, I could have clarified a little, a little better on that just because we do have mixed audiences mm -hmm. on, on these platforms, especially Twitter, uh, because so many people can see that. But what I think is important to note is that we, we know COVID cases have increased. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we've read the numbers. We, you know, obviously we've done a podcast with the racial reconciliation and just the injustices there. And we acknowledge yeah. those things, just the lives that are being affected, both with African-Americans and police and, you know, other ethnicities. Like we, you know, in no way are, are turning a blind eye to those things. And there are still, you know, places we've been in the world where kids are still living in garbage dumps. Mm -hmm. And, and, you know, so we don't turn our eyes to these things and, and we still, still in the midst of this are doing what we can to make a difference in these areas that yeah. God's brought to our attention and in the forefront, especially in our nation right now. But it's recognizing the higher truth mm -hmm. that even amidst these things, God is still good mm -hmm. and we can still pursue a relationship with him that takes us deeper and deeper with him. Um, that gives us more wisdom that gives us the solutions to these problems. Um, I'm convinced that the church has the solutions mm -hmm. to these issues, but maybe we just haven't pressed in enough to God or, you know, we've been so busy. That's what, that's what this pandemic has taught me is learning to prioritize my life. <clears throat> right. Because I had, I had just jumbled everything together and just added one task on top of another and I'm going here and I'm serving there and I'm doing this and that and just pouring myself out and not prioritizing God is like, no, this seek you first, the kingdom of God and its righteousness and all these things will be added unto you. Mm -hmm. And so it's, it's not that we turn a blind eye to these things, but we just have to recognize that there are two narratives going on right mm -hmm. now. And so I believe I, I spoke about this in one of our previous podcasts, but it's worth re-mentioning Pastor Andrew and, uh, Rockford, well, I was listening to his live stream and he was saying there's two narratives going on right now. And the first is the prominent narrative. And that's what you're getting on news. That's what you're hearing on CNN, on Fox, on all the other ones. That's what you're hearing on the radio. That's what you're seeing on social media is just the prominent in your face. It's the loud, mm -hmm. the, the loud voice, the loud message. And it's just proclaiming all of these things, you know, the COVID spreading, the disease is getting worse, like more people are dying. This, this is just going on and on. But then there's a second narrative that's the prophetic narrative. Mm. And that's what God is speaking during this hour. Yeah. And what's, what's hard about that is that's typically a, a smaller voice. Mm. It's more of a whisper than it is that loud screaming and blaring that you get when you turn on the TV or you turn on social media. But God has a prophetic message that he's releasing in the earth during this time. And we have to be willing and it's hard, mm -hmm. but we have to be willing to tune other things out. And that doesn't mean that you're turning a blind eye to them. That doesn't mean that you're ignoring them or not acknowledging them because we can, we can acknowledge these things 
without, without bowing to them, mm. if that makes sense. I can acknowledge the coronavirus and I can take precautions that uh, are recommended to take. And I do, um, but that doesn't mean I'm going to, I'm going to fear it and worship it and bow down to it. Mm. Um, and so it's, it's just realizing that, yeah, the, the prominent narrative is louder, but, but there's a prophetic narrative that God is speaking Mm -hmm. things that he's doing in this time. And that's what I want to be tuned into because that's, and that, that is where it just keeps getting better because as you go deeper and deeper to God, uh, into God, uh, you learn more about him. You experience his peace, every, everything that he has to offer you, the gifts of the spirit, you grow in those things. (laughs) And even though the situation around us may still seem dark, we have that defiant hope that I'm not going to lay down and just take this, Mm -hmm. you know, because what's in me is greater than what's in the world. And just because I haven't accessed that yet, maybe I haven't um, seen it in full. Yeah. Seen it. Maybe I'm not at the place where that I'm able to release that. Mm -hmm. Um, I know I'm on the right path and I know God can still do that and he still works and he still moves. And like I said, I know he has solutions through his church Mm. to bring about justice to those who've experienced injustice, to bring about a cure to the disease. You know, the Bible says that there's a tree in heaven that the leaves are for the healing of the nations. Mm. And so we have to, we have to go up in in heaven and our relationship and our devotion time and our worship and access those things and bring them to earth. Yeah. Cause that's for the earth. If why, but heaven, heaven is perfect. They don't right. need healing in heaven. They need healing in earth. Mm-hmm. And so we have to be willing to travel to that dimension through our worship and yeah. our praise and, and in our faith. Yeah. Shutting off the TV mm-hmm. and, and traveling instead of the TV dimension, traveling to that <laughs> heaven and get, grab those leaves and take them down. Yeah. You know, uh, get those solutions, get those ideas that comes through the form of, of God giving us strategies mm. for the days ahead. Yeah. And I'm reminded of that verse of, calling those things that aren't as though they are calling them into being. And that's really what we're doing that in that message. It just keeps getting better. Even though we have experienced that we're calling it forth on the airwaves for the earth as well. Um, for, for your life that it's just going to keep getting better as you partner with him, as you surrender Mm -hmm. your life to him. Um, you know, I'm, and I, I think of Paul where he says, I've learned to know what it is to be content in all circumstances, whether I have plenty, whether I have little, um, whether he was being persecuted or whether he was, you know, preaching to, to thousands, there was that contentment that he found in Christ that surpassed his circumstances, surpassed what was going on in the, in the climate around him because he had that inner world was connected to the father. And, and I actually, you know, at first I got a little offended with that stuff. And then I was like, yeah, you know, probably it does seem a little, um, insensitive insensitive to just keep, yeah, well, it just keeps getting better and better, but people didn't know our heart behind it. And it was like you said, it was a small clip taken out of, uh, a full greater context of where we shared our testimony, where we shared, you know, um, it does keep our life have, has gotten better because of our relationship with Christ. And I I've learned new things and I've healed more and Mm -hmm. I've helped more and I've reached out to people more because I've been full and healed in a lot of areas, not perfect, but it's, it's enriched my life so that I can go and and enrich others in their walk and, 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 and I began to pray for those people that were retweeting and, and things like that, because I was like, Lord, I, I hope they know you. I hope, I hope they find, find this joy that I found and I hope they, they experience you. And, um, and so I began praying for them, but there's, there's this defiant hope that keeps us moving forward. Mm-hmm. And, I just think of the difficult times we walked through and, and just having to tell ourselves, it's not always going to be like this. Mm -hmm. This isn't going to be my story for all the chapters. This is just, this is just a few pages. This may be just a chapter, but it's not my whole story. It's not always going to be like this. And I think that's one message we want to get across to you guys is don't view the entire span of your life through this single snapshot. 
Mm-hmm. And, and I often say it's, it's really a pixel of the entire picture right. of your life and, and these hardships in 2020, a whole year, it may seem like a lot, but God can redeem that time. Amen. And, uh, you know, there's, there's the verse that says, I, I would have fainted had I not believed I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Mm-hmm. And that means in the now, that's right. not in future. It's in the now in the land of the living. Mm-hmm. And there's that I would have fainted, but I had the hope. I yeah. had the defiant driving fire in me that just believed with all of my heart that I am going to see the goodness of the Lord and all the things that he's promised in the land of the living. Yeah. And it's not always going to make sense in the, in the process of it. And you know, I, it doesn't make sense to me why, uh, you know, George Floyd died the way that he did. Mm -hmm. Like, it doesn't make sense to me. Um, you know, the other, the other unjust cases, the other names that have died because of it It doesn't make sense why this virus is going into nursing homes and, Mm -hmm. and destroying, you know, the lives of, of elderly people. Um, and just, and that's just one piece of it. I mean, there's so much, It, it doesn't make sense while there, why there are still people, hungry and without water in the earth. Like Mm -hmm. it doesn't, it doesn't make sense to me, but that that drives me Mm -hmm. then to say, okay, so what can I do? Because I want it to just keep getting better for these people as well. Yeah. I want them to experience the fullness of, of Jesus in their life. Um, because ultimately that's what, that's what we all need. Some of this may not always make sense, but I think of the verse that talks about how the earth is groaning Mm -hmm. for the sons of God to come forth or to manifest. And that sons is inclusive sons and daughters. And I just think the earth is groaning so much because it's, it's needing that representation of Jesus in the earth. It's needing, it's needing the church to rise up and be who, who we were called to be and not just to stay within the four walls of the church and not just to keep practicing on each other, but to literally go out and be who God has created us to be. Mm. Because like I said, we, we may not always have that. We may not have the answers or the strategies right now, but I, I believe, I believe in my heart that as we continue to be consistent in the secret place, as we continue to be persistent and in, in pursuing after God and asking him, Lord, what are your strategies? Give me dreams, give me visions, give me plans, give me blueprints. I, I believe with all my heart that we can see a different world mm-hmm. in, in just a few generations than what we see, yeah. than what we're living in now. Like our children, our future children won't have to live in the state that the world is in now mm-hmm. if we are willing to to stay consistent with God and seek after him and find out his heart for people in the earth. Yeah. That's so good. I think God never promised that we would never have hardships. He gave man free will. And that's, you know, there's just different things um, that he gave man dominion over and man's Mm -hmm. let it fall to the wayside. Right. And so a lot of people blame God, but it's just like, no, I gave you free will. And so we can get into a lot of things there, but, and I think, did I, did I want our dad to die of cancer? Did I want to be a child of a divorced home or things like that? No, they didn't make sense, but God never promised that it would be an easy life, but he promised that he would walk through it with us Mm -hmm. every single circumstance and through each hardship and through, through each difficult time, the Lord has been there Mm -hmm. and, and it has, um, brought a new level of understanding, a new level of compassion for other people who go through hardships. Mm -hmm. We may not understand each individual's hardship or what they've gone through, but we can have empathy. And because, because we know what it is to hurt and we know what it is to um, grieve and, and to struggle for different things and to walk through hard things, we can have empathy for somebody else, even though we don't necessarily completely understand Mm -hmm. their struggles. Yeah. And we can advocate. Yeah. And we can use, we can come alongside and, and, but there's, there's still working towards a better tomorrow Mm -hmm. in all of that. It's not just, this is all it is. We're done. You know, good luck everybody for themselves. Blame God for all of this. And, and this is it. This guy's hunker down because this is, this is the end. We need to be people who prophesy to the dry bones yeah. come alive. That's good. 
we need to look along the desolate places and say, can, can these dry bones live again? Can this desert bloom? Can a stream come out of the wasteland? And, you know, we as people of God can speak into that mm -hmm. and, and speak hope into the desolate situations. And it's been proven in scripture over and over again, but it takes people to, to prophesy and to step and have faith and to step out and to, um, to see those things happen. Yeah. Well, and I want, there's a story coming to mind that you just told me, I think yesterday about a couple that started replanting trees mm. and things. And I just think that's, yeah, so important. I'm going to look this up. <laughs> she, yeah, she told me this. It's an awesome story just about how when you catch God's vision for something, when you see his original intent, sometimes we as the church just have this like rapture mentality and like, oh, why does it matter? We're just going to be gone soon anyways. But like not taking that approach, taking a generational approach like God does and asking, okay, what was your original intent when you created the earth? when you created us, what, and, and how can we get back to that place? Mm -hmm. How can we get back to the garden of Eden? Yeah. Yeah. And I just saw this headline on Instagram and it was, uh, it says a Brazilian couple plants 2.7 million trees in 20 years and brings dying forest back to life. And it just went on to say how the husband had grown up in the area and had come back. They, came back to live there and he was just astonished at how the forest had just been just torn down burnt or you know used for lumber what just the the atmosphere and the environment he grew up in was just totally changed and so they bought property and because they were so troubled by this him and his wife got together and said hey why don't we start planting trees and I believe they started like back, I can't remember exactly the date, but um, it, 20 years, in 20 years, they got donors um, to donate money, donate trees and, and finances so that they could cultivate this, this area around this property that they bought. And in 20 years, like the headline said, 2.7 million trees were planted mm -hmm. just, just because wow. of this two couple, this couple's um, efforts. And now they're talking about, I, don't, I read the article, they're talking about endangered, you know, species of birds and, and different, different animals that had no place to, to nest and no mm -hmm. place to wander and eat and live. They're starting to habit, habitate that, that area and they're starting to, to come in and, and breed more and, and all, all because of two people mm -hmm. that said, no, this isn't how this isn't the earth I remember. This isn't the environment I remember. It, it can be more than this. I, I, I don't want this to be it and just for it to keep disintegrating in front of my eyes, for this yeah. forest to just keep getting um, worse and worse. And it caused me to think about what if that couple had said, ah, someone else will take care of it or, no, oh, this is just how it is until, right. until the world ends. This is just how this forest is, is just going to keep getting worse and worse. And this is just the times that we live in and mm -hmm. can't do anything about it. What, tw and I, you know, 20 years have passed and, and, and I'm sure if you ask them, it probably went by pretty quickly because they, they were planning so much and, and just investing and then now when you look at the picture of before and after, it's completely different. The before picture, you see the aerial view of the house and it kind of looks like an Arizona landscape, maybe a little bit. And the very, very outskirts have trees, but then the aerial view now in present day, 20 years mm -hmm. later, after 2.7 million trees have been planted, it looks like a Brazilian rainforest. It mm -hmm. looks like it can hold a lot of wildlife and and sustain that area and that that was such an encouraging testimony to me of what seeing a need is and being the one to fill it mm -hmm. and believing you can change the future for the better yeah because that's god's heart is it's his heart for his creation to to grow and thrive mm -hmm. and for 
those animals and, and birds and things to have a home. Like it's, it's God's heart for justice to be brought to his people. It's his heart for there to be no hungry, starving people mm-hmm. in the world. Like this, these are all things that are his heart. And so as his representation in the earth, like that's, that's our calling. Mm-hmm. That's our calling is not just to project an image of Christ, but to reflect yeah. his image that when people see us, they see Jesus and they see his, his heart mm-hmm. for earth and its creation. And, and they hear, they hear his voice when they hear us speak. Yeah. And we don't turn an eye, a blind eye to these things. We don't uh, not acknowledge them. We don't mm-hmm. stay silent because Jesus did not mm-hmm. on these issues when he walked the earth and, and in his scriptures, they, they address these issues. And so in that process, we have to make sure that, we keep this defiant hope Mm -hmm. that we don't, because there are a lot of things, a lot of heavy things going on in everyone's lives right now. And we have to be the ones that stand up and say, God has a plan Mm -hmm. and God can bring about change. God, God can bring about uh, good things through the, even though these are devastating situations, God can bring about things that will change and bring healing to us and the generations after us that, like we said earlier, that this doesn't have to be the world that we hand over to the next generation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. This, there's always more, there's, there's always something we can be doing. And, you know, if we offended anybody with that, with our post or anything, it's, it's, that was never our intention. Mm -hmm. Our intention was to glorify God as worship leaders. Our intention was to speak hope into an atmosphere um, and not belittle anything that's going on in the world, right? you know, in people's experiences. But we are always going to glorify God above mm-hmm. our circumstances because right. that's what we believe as Christ followers. Right. And, and so that, that's, that's our heart. And we wanted to share, we're not, we're not going to engage in, in arguments and we're not going to, we're not going to fight those, those battles because God is calling us higher and he's Mm -hmm. calling us to be about his business on the earth. And if we're constantly nipping at everybody and getting involved in these, in these little squirmishes on Twitter, social media or whatever it is, or like Whitney said, being caught up in the news all the time and, and scrolling to get the latest negative news that's coming out. If, if that consumes our time, we can't be going and helping those hungry children. We can't be going and proclaiming the light. We can't be going and, and doing what he's asked us to do because that, that stuff takes not only your time, but your energy and your emotional health. And it, um, takes you away from things that you could be filling yourself with during this time, like hearing his voice, scripture, uh, worship and communing with, with other believers. And when I use defiant hope, it's not, not that attitude. Like I mentioned, we're going to show you, we're going to go do this. No, it's, I'm choosing to stand on what God has said and who he is and his character. His character is good. His character has never failed me. His character has proven that it does get better with him as you submit your life to him. Mm -hmm. And that's my testimony. And I want you guys to have it too. And so if you're listening to this and, and you don't under understand what it's like to know Jesus like that, to struggle in finding hope in this hour, we want to pray for you and um, we want to lift you up and we want to come alongside you. And, and like we mentioned earlier, we may not know your struggles, we may, but we can empathize with them and we can come alongside you and pray with you. And because we believe Jesus is the answer to every issue, not, not Christians, not, not, not the American church, not anything else, but it's Jesus. Mm -hmm. And if Jesus is alive in people who call themselves Christ followers, that's when the solution starts happening. Yeah, that's good. And I just want to say this verse too, before we pray, uh, Romans 15, 13, may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace and believing so that by the power of the Holy spirit, you may abound in hope. Mm-hmm. And right now the message that isn't getting preached a lot in the media and things like that are spoken about is hope. 
And so as the church of Christ, we need to rise up and be that beacon to be that, that ray of light in, in a world that's grown very dark, very quickly. Mm-hmm. And, and just to, to be the hope to the hopeless. Yeah. So um, we'll just go ahead and, and end this with a, a quick prayer. Lord, we just thank you for everyone listening. We thank you for just every opportunity that you take to grow us, to teach us, to mature us. We, um, we love being brought into maturity by you and that anytime you bring something to our attention, it's because you want to bring us into maturity. And so we honor that God and we thank you for it. And we just pray for those listening right now who may be Christians, who may be not, but who are just in a hopeless situation, God, who just feel like the water is in over their heads, who don't see a, a better day coming. Lord, I just pray that that you give them uh, just that, even just an inkling of hope inside that this isn't what it's always going to be like yeah. and that there are better days ahead and that we we have the power with Christ in us to make things change, uh, to, to make better things happen in the earth and and for those, for those who may not know Christ, God, I just ask right now that they take a moment and just, just accept you, Jesus, as the one who's died on the cross for their sins, who yes. loved them, who, who created them, who thought of them before he even created the earth, Lord, and, and just knew that there was a plan and a purpose for their life. And, and for anyone who is uh, maybe contemplating suicide, God, I yes. just pray that you just come in and, and, and overwhelm them with peace. They've been overwhelmed with hopelessness and um, even just feelings of, of hatred or, or self-doubt or self-loathing, God, I just pray that you come in there and that they, right now, as, we're, as they're listening to this, God, that they just experience your love yes. and just sense your presence like they never have before, Yes, Lord, and that even though they may not have all the answers or everything may not make sense, um, but that they know that they're in your hands, God, and that as they continue seeking after you, um, days are going to get better, God, in you, regardless of what's happening on the outside. And so, um, Lord, just encourage everyone where they're at, meet everyone where they're at right now. And we just pray for the strategies. We pray for the solutions. God, we pray for um, just the fruits of the spirit, Lord, to, to manifest in this hour so that we can see change in the earth and we can see your kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. In yes. Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you guys for coming up higher with us once again. And um, we just hope that you are filled with hope today. And um, God wants to give you life and life abundantly yeah. and a hope for the future. So hang in there. Keep believing. And uh, we love you guys. God bless.